Hello students. So here we have another fun project, right? Uh, this is uh, Python again. So I'm calling this the Floriculturist. <laughs> I have no idea how to pronounce that properly. But anyway, the idea is this the scenario. Huh? So imagine you are a Floriculturist uh, working for Gardens by the Bay, right? So for the next exhibition, you wish to plant the flowers such that they do not block other flowers when they are visible. So you plant flowers, they grow, right? Then, of course, uh, flowers, they grow to different heights. So the taller one will actually block the shorter ones. So each type of flower, right, is represented with the following attribute. You have the height, you have uh, when it bloom and when it built, right? So flower bloom, flowers built. So the height here represents how high each type of flower grows. The bloom represents the morning that each type actually spring from the ground and the will actually represents the evening that each type of flower shiver and die. That means if the bloom and the wilt actually um, is the same day, uh, they still exist at the same time and will block each other. So this is something you take note. So the scenario is this, you must plant all the flowers of the same type in a single row, right? So you know, in the same type of flowers, they'll be fine, right? Uh, you want to have the tallest flower as far forward as possible. So you want to talk top flowers near, however, right? Uh, if the flower type is taller than another type, both can be out of the ground at the same time and the shorter one must be in front. Else the taller one will block the shorter flower. <laughs> Makes sense, right? So that's the scenario. Uh, a flower blooms in the morning, will in the evening. So even if one flower is blooming the same day as another is building, you know, they can still block each other. So that's the scenario. So let's see what uh, we have. So the inputs that we are going to collect from the user, right, is the uh, height, a list of height, a list of uh, bloom, and a list of uh, wilt. So there are some conditions over here which we will use for validation, right? So the height, okay, will have the between two to fifty elements. So we will check for that. The blooms uh, have the same number of elements as the height. The wilt also have the same number of elements as the height. So they, they must match, right? So the height will have no repeated elements. So we are assuming that the different flowers all have different heights. So each, each element of the height will be between 1 to 1,000. That's the units that we will use to measure the height. Each element of the bloom will be between 1 to 365. So that will be the days of the year. As well, the will also be 1 to 365. So for each element uh, of the bloom and will, naturally the will has to be greater than bloom, right? You have to bloom first, then you will. You cannot <laughs> will first, then you bloom. It doesn't make sense. So these are the conditions which we are going to use for validation. So take note of that. So that's the input. So we will, these are the input we are going to handle, validate, and then after that, you know, uh, uh, manage the input into the form that is useful for us for processing, right? And what is the output that's expected of us? The output will just be a single line of integers which contain the element of the height uh, in the order that we plan them to achieve the goal. So we will plan them in such a way that they will not block each other as they grow, right? So the front of the garden is represented by the first element in the return value. So you know, reading from left to right, so left will be the front, the right will be the back, right? Uh, the elements of the height will be unique. So like I said, the flowers, they don't have the same height if they are different flowers. So there will always be a well-defined uh, ordering. Okay, so that's the idea. So there are some scenarios for you. Example one, example, uh, they start by example zero. That's the question. So feel free to, to pause the video and read them if you want to, to get a better idea. We could use this for your test cases as well, but it's not exhaustive. Okay, but the idea is that. So what we have is this height, we have this uh, bloom and the wheel, and then this is what it returns, right? Because in the first scenario, uh, all of them bloom and wheel at the same time, so they will all block each other. So we will grow in such a way that the shortest one is in front. Okay. However, in the example one, you'll find that you the bloom and the wheel dates, they do not overlap. So since they do not overlap, we will have the tallest one in front. So five will be in front, right? One will be at the back. Okay, so that's the idea. Uh, over here, okay, they overlap again. So the wheel and the bloom day, they, they intersect. So in this case, we will still need the shortest one in front. Uh, and of course, there's a scenario here where uh, there's uh, some overlap and some non-overlap. So in this case, they will you no, know, uh, read the info properly, and uh, you can find that three, four, five can go first. So you no, know, uh, the plan number three will come out. Okay, it will not be blocking, right? So I mean, because three, four, and five they block each other, so three will be in front, but one and two does not affected. 
so they can be at the back. Okay, so you can read the details here. The difference here is that the third type of flower will one day earlier than the blooming of the fourth flower. So we can put the flower, the height, uh, number three first, right? And then four and then five. So this is fine. Now one and two is okay at the back. Okay, we can also order them with the height one first, but we want the taller one in front. That's the idea. So we can adjust. Okay, so this is a very interesting uh, scenario. Uh, and you can see that the, what I've written there, this is a suggested solutions. Well, when the teachers plan this scenario, I can uh, let you know that there's definitely more than one way to handle it. In fact, as I was uh, trying it out, I realized that um, what I did is not exactly the most optimized, but my objective when I'm trying to do this is to make it as readable as possible. Okay, uh, optimization is actually um, something for professional programmer. This is for educational purposes, so readability is more important. They understand how the code works. Okay, so I'll mention those as well when we look at it. So, so uh, some prep work needs to be done, right? Because this is going to be a long code, I will actually have some uh, UDF, okay, user-defined functions to help me to organize things a little bit better, right? So the first one I did was to actually have the validation as a function all by itself. Okay, so you can see here, uh, I validate the inputs. So I do know that I'm going to collect a list of height, a list of bloom, and a list of wilt. So this is fine. So what? I've, so this is what I've collected. Put it inside this uh, function, and I will check that the height, uh, the elements inside the height, right? They are actually between two to fifty. So very quick check, no problem. Just an if statement will do. Okay. I also want to check that they all have the same number of elements. So I check that the bloom and the the um, wilt they have the same number of elements at the height. So if they are not the same. Then of course I'll return false. Otherwise, you know, later I'll return true. If everything else works fine, right? So the third things I check is to make sure that the height is not repeated. Over here, I make use of the set over here, right? So by having the set there, you no, know, if there's a repeated one, they will just be classified as uh, within the same element, uh, inside the set. So the length or the total number of elements inside the set will actually differ from the length. That's so this is a case where if I if within the height I have a repeated, but it's not repeated when I cast it into a set. So the length will become different. Then that means that's actually repeated, so I'll return false. Okay. Otherwise it's fine. Right? Uh going on, next one. Uh check that the height is uh between one to one thousand. Okay, so uh this one should be quite straightforward for most of you. Uh and then after that, uh, of course for the bloom and wheel, I check that they are in between one to three hundred sixty-five. Okay. Finally, the last condition, right, because uh, uh, each of the element, the index, I want to check that, make sure that the bloom date uh, is actually before the wheel date. So if the bloom date is more than the wheel date of each element, sorry, of each index, I will return false. Okay. Otherwise, if all the checks are fine, okay, everything passed, uh, I, I never return false, then I return true at the end. Return true at the end. So that's the validation. We sort it out already. So get the validation sorted out separately. It's, it makes the whole code cleaner. This is fine. Right? Uh, then I actually have um, the next section here where I see I sort the input. What happened is uh, in the example and the instructions, you find that the height is arranged nicely. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. But when the user input, they may not input them in that order. So I do want to sort them uh, first so that I have the tallest one uh, in front and the shortest one at the back. So I, I have my first arrangement in that way without considering the bloom and the wheel first. So after that, then I sort it up. If not, there's too many things to consider and the things get messy. So down here, I sort it according to the height, okay, in descending order, tallest to the shortest first. Uh, now, um, like I said, this is not the most uh, optimized. It's just not the you know, most efficient sorting method. I actually use a bubble sort here. But one of the reasons why I use bubble sort here is because it allows me to make it very readable when I when I actually adjust. Because I'm not just sorting the height, I'm comparing the height. But as I compare the height, when I do the sorting and adjusting, I also adjust the bloom and the wheel because they must match. Right? So the same index must follow along, which is why I use a bubble sort here because it's very clean. Uh, is there other ways to do this? Of course there is okay uh in fact the uh, one of the recommended way in this case was to is to actually to zip the height the bloom and the wheel together but because uh we have not taught 
the zip function so i'm not going to use it in this particular example so bubble sort actually works although like i said not the most optimized way but it works right so we have that so we sort it out okay uh, after we sort it out so we now uh, have all this information in the order by height descending order but when i return it i I don't want to return all these lists separately because later on the processing, I don't want all the lists everywhere. I want it as clean as possible. So to help uh, to get the cleanest uh, way of collecting the data so that I can do my processing, I actually collect them as another separate list called flowers, right? So what happened is for each of these flowers, each elements inside of these flowers is actually another list and Inside this list, you have the height of the first of flower one, the bloom of flower one, and then after that, the wheel of flower one. Then the next element is another list, which is the height of flower two, the bloom of flower two, and the wheel of flower two, and so on and so forth. So it becomes a collection of flowers. So this flowers uh, list is actually just flower one, flower two, flower three, flower four. Each of these flower will have these three attributes. So I will just return this list back to my main function. And I just need to handle this one list as my input very clean. So that's why we put we do some work over here. Okay. So I, I create the flower, I, I, I declare it, right? Then after that, I run through the entire um, index. And for each of these index, I append a list like this, height, room, and wheel into it. So it's, it's done. Okay, so that's what we do. So when, so when I run this sort input, I actually what I get back in return is actually one. Uh, just one list or an array or, or you can even imagine it as a two-dimensional array right and uh, of course a uh, very short uh, UDF here uh, to check whether when I put two flowers in because remember now my my data right is actually sorted according to flowers so flower zero flower one flower two flower three and so on so I collect two of these flowers uh, that each of them is actually a list, right? I put them into this uh, function called this block to check whether they're blocking each other. So that's where I'm checking now. So each of these flowers uh, that come in here, right? The index zero is actually the height, index one is actually the bloom, index two is actually the wheel. So I just need to check whether, you know, the flowers, the, the bloom, is it more than the wheel or whether the wheel is less than the bloom. If it is, then they do not intersect. So if they not intercept, they will not block each other. So if they do not block each other, I return false. Otherwise, I return true. So this is what I prepare in the UDF. So sometimes having this UDF, you know, um, break things down. Uh, it, it, debugging is also easier. So I clean it up like this. It's very useful. So later on, I'll just uh, use these functions in my main function. Ready to go to main function? Okay. So of course, anytime you need to actually look at the code a little bit clearer, uh, slower, you know, you feel free to pause the video, study it, and uh, after that, after you get inspiration, go back and try it on your own. All right. Uh, so the input, well, um, straightforward. Just collect the heights, collect the bloom, collect the wheels. So the input, as uh, shown in the instruction earlier, will just be a series of numbers. So I will collect them as a single string naturally and then I want them as integer because I'm comparing them later on. So if I compare integers, makes sense, right? I can use the inequality uh, uh, and so on. So you now cast them as integers. So my my I have a height here, which is uh, the input height, cast them out, okay, as each one as a as an integer. So I have a list of integer here, same with blue, same with milk. Okay. After I've done that, okay, I have the data. I will validate them, right? So I check, validate them. So I send them into the validate validation function that I have. Okay, the height, the bloom, the wheel. And we have already checked this out, right? It brings it takes in these three lists and it does all the comparing. That's why I change it to integer first so that when I throw it inside this function, it doesn't crash, right? So uh, after it validates, if everything is good, it returns true, then I will actually break out of this while while loop here. Uh, otherwise, I will say, okay, invalid input and ask the user to try it. So what happened after I break out? After I break out, okay, um, I'm going to do the sort inputs. So this is the one I'm talking about. Sort them according to height in descending order. And what I get in return is just one giant list of lists known as flowers. Okay, so that is the input I received. I've actually, you know, collect the data, adjust it in the way I want, validate it. And then, yeah, this is what I have, flowers.
So now I'm going to use these flowers and process it according to the requirement. Okay, right. So how do I process it? Well, these flowers is uh, from, from descending order of the height. I have not yet considered the bloom and the wheel, right? So after I consider the bloom and the wheel, I need to reorder them. So what I do is I started out by creating another list called ordered flowers. This will be the final order after considering everything, right? And then I, I go flower by flower to investigate. So for flowers in flower, that means inside the flowers, the, the input flowers, I'm going to go flower by flower. What I'm going to do with each one? Well, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to insert this, okay, take this flower, insert this from the flower list into the ordered flower list. So flower list to order flower list. I'm going to do it one by one. Okay. So I'm going to, first of all, I haven't insert yet. So I declare insert force. I have not insert. Right. Then I check with the current flower that I pick up. So one flower at a time, I pick it up and check whether I can actually insert it in. When do I insert it in? Well, I check it against the uh, ordered flower. So right now there's nothing inside there. But later on, I will check. Right. So what is already planted? Right. So I imagine uh, I have uh, flowers and I have ordered flowers. So there's nothing in the ordered flowers. I take the flowers, I pluck, take the flowers, pluck. So and when I take over, before I pluck, I need to check. Right. Whether is where should I put it under the ordered flowers? So that's what's going on. So for the each of the flowers that's already uh, inserted into the new one, okay, I need to compare and check whether they'll block each other. So I check, is it block? So uh, block, so I check the flower. This flower is the flower that I, I, I'm transferring and then compare it to the ordered flowers. That means those that's already planted. So I compare them. Are they blocking? Right? If it is blocking, then I insert my new flower in front because it's blocking i must insert it in front right because it's already I, i'm the first flower i take is actually the tallest one so you get shorter and shorter right so i take uh oh blocking put the shorter one in front right then after that i declare ah this one inserted inserted already successful already get out <laughs> no need to compare anymore once i insert over compare i already already block it so i go back okay uh out of my my for loop plug another one and let's go right now what happened if it's not inserted Right, that means I compare, compare, I take the flower, I compare with each of the flowers that's already inserted, and I find that hey, I can't, I can't, it's not blocked, it's not blocked, it's not blocked, so I can't plant it. How? That, that means it's it's fine, right? It will never be blocked. I put it at the back. So that's what, what happened. If it's not inserted, I append it to the back. You, you, you see how it goes? Okay, so if you need to actually uh, take your time, take out a piece of paper, sketch out and see how, or trace it to see how it goes. Uh, it could be helpful for, for some students, I understand. So once I do that, I, I pluck it out. Every, everything is transferred successfully from the flowers to the ordered flowers. Now, what happened? My output, all I want from my output is just the height, right? I don't need the, the other information anymore. I don't need the bloom. I don't need the wheel. So the result that I want is actually just all the index zero, right? Because all the index zero give me all the height. So I collect all the index zero for the ordered flowers, pick it out, and then print out the results. Okay, so that is uh, my suggested solution. Like I said at the very beginning, uh, some of you actually, you know, we do recommend that you try it out first. If you're stuck and you're having issues, then you compare your answers with mine for some inspiration. So, so you may have a different approach. Uh, it is fine. There are more than one way to do it. So I'm, I'm just providing an, uh, an option. If you're stuck, maybe you by going through what I've come up with, something that uh, I tested it out, it seems to work. It may give you some ideas, right? So uh, happy coding, and I hope uh, you have a nice day, right?